Brady Farkas here, 104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team.com. Had an opportunity to go to Glens Falls this morning for Jimmer Fredette's Jimmerosity 3-on-3 camp to stop bullying. I met with Jimmer for five minutes, and here's how that exchange went. Jimmer, first off, how great is it to be back in Glens Falls and having this camp here at your high school? It's awesome. I mean, I love to be able to come back and see the kids and uh, see the support that I, that I still have in the area. You know, it's it's my hometown. It is something that I, you know, grew up loving. And there's so many people in this area that helped me get to where I am today. So I want to be able to come back and, and give back and hopefully be a, a good role model, a good example for the kids that are around here that I used to have when I was in this area. So, you know, it's always exciting for me. What's the best part of being back home? What's the first thing you did when you got back home? I know you were you were jumping off of uh, cliffs or something. You're, you love uh, pizza places. What, what's the thing you did when you first got here? Yeah, definitely Angelina's, Angelina's Pizza, my, my guy's uh, pizza place. In, uh, in Glens Falls here. So they're, they're our boys. They're like our family. Uh, so I always stop by the shop first to get my, my pizza fill and uh, you know make sure to see everybody. And then we go from there. We're at your Jimerosity 3-on-3 camp for anti-bullying. Why is anti-bullying a, a cause that you got involved in? There's a lot of causes out there. What makes this one so special to you? Yeah, there are. There's so many causes out there. And you kind of have to choose one and to be a, a, a successful foundation so that you can really focus in and try to help that group of areas. But, you know, we started off helping families, and uh, that's what our main focus was. But the families would come to us and tell us that their kids were, you know, going to school and then coming home and, and not being social with the family. They just wanted to go up to their room and, and kind of hang out and, and because they had a really tough day at school. And uh, they were either being bullied or not being included. And because of that, you know, it breaks up the family unit. So we figured that, you know, bullying is such a big issue these days, not just in schools but also cyberbullying on Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram that we wanted to try to teach these kids some fundamental skills of how to be respectful, how to try to be, how to include people, um, you know, when there's a kid at lunch that's sitting by himself, you know, bring them to your lunch table and just have a good time, have a good talk with them, and it can really brighten a kid's day, and um, you know, or a week. So I think that's something that's very important to us. We're here in the gym that really kind of got your career started. You scored 45 against Scotia in this gym. You got to the, to the state title game through this gym. What's the best memory you have here in this gym? Uh, there's so many good memories in this gym. I mean, um, I remember there was one certain night that, that we played against Gloversville um, here in this gym, and it was the night that they gave me my McDonald's, uh, on the, the American All-American Award. I wasn't in the game or anything, but they give some out to kids, so I thought that that was pretty cool because I grew up watching it, and uh, we played against Gloversville, who was a really good team, and we uh, ended up blowing them out and playing really well, and I had a really good game, so I remember that night because it was our senior year and it was senior night and all that stuff so what a great memory it was to be able to have that with my friends and uh, the people I grew up with and how the gym was packed and we were able to, to play our best game on that night. There's a lot of D1 players coming out of this area now. Uh, Joe Cremo from Scotia is going to you all when he Kevin Herter from Shen was just at the Nike Basketball Academy playing with LeBron and your old teammate Anthony Davis. Garrett Whitley from Niskiuna just got drafted in the Major League Baseball draft so there's a lot of Section 2 pride going on right now. How cool is that for you to see as you're one of the guys that kind of blazed the trail? No, it's, it's amazing. I mean, we have great athletes up in this area, and we always have, really. Um, it's just that sometimes it was hard for us to get to get out there and get seen. But nowadays with the AAU and the different uh, things that you can do for each sport, um, you were able to get out there and show our talent from this upstate area. Um, so it's, it's, it's awesome to be able to see that, and I hope it continues to grow because we have some great talent, and uh, we're able to be seen now. The, uh, the video went viral on the Internet a few days ago of you dancing at your old teammate's wedding. Where did those moves come from? Oh, yeah, I've had those since yeah. I was young. <laughs> it's all about, uh, we had like an hour choreographing session. My wife was the one that helped put it together. And uh, the guys on the team, we had a great time doing it. And uh, we put it together. And we didn't think it would go crazy viral, but, uh, you know, like like it has. But we, we got a lot of views on it, it looks like. So it was a fun thing. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm never afraid to show some moves off. So <laughs> I don't remember the exact number, whether it's 75 or 95 or something like that, but if Steph Curry hit that many threes in a row at some point in practice this year, what's the most threes you've ever hit in a row in one setting? Yeah, that's a good question. I honestly, uh, you know, I'm not 100% sure. I've made quite a few. I don't know if I, I think it was 70 something that he made. I don't know if I've ever quite made that much, but uh, I definitely have made quite a few threes in a row, but I used to count my free throws in, that I used to make in a row, and you know, I always did a pretty
pretty good job shooting my free throws. So, uh, you know, that's a good question. I'd have to check it out one time, see if I could beat it. Last question, the NBA free agency just opened up. You are a free agent. Has anyone called you yet? And what's the next step in your career, hopefully? Yeah, no, we've had uh, definitely great conversations with different teams out there. Um, you never know what's going to happen. And I don't try to worry about it all that much. You know, things are going to happen the way that they're going to happen. Um, you know, a lot of times the big free agents will, will go first and people are looking to sign those guys and then everybody else kind of falls into place after they have some of their roster set. Um, so we'll, we'll be waiting and, uh, you know, waiting patiently and seeing what's going to happen and hopefully, you know, within mid-July or end of July we'll be able to figure something out. So uh, I'm excited about it.